We begin with a major break in a case that has all the maxims of a Hollywood thriller. Multiple arrests and charges have been laid after $20 million in gold bars vanished from Toronto's Pearson International Airport one year ago. Now police are calling it an inside job. Ali Shiasan has the details. You're watching $20 million in gold bars getting stolen, and it wasn't all that hard to pull off. The suspect arrived at Air Canada Cargo driving a five-ton truck. The suspect was carrying a fraudulent airway bill as he approached the warehouse. The forged papers were printed at the Air Canada cargo hangar by an Air Canada employee. A short time later, a forklift arrived with a container of gold and foreign currency and loaded it into the rear of the suspect's truck. The suspect then drives away. It wasn't until Brinks Canada arrived later that evening to pick up the bullion that warehouse workers realized the gold was gone. And so Project 24 Carat was launched. First, investigators tracked the truck's path. Soon, they were conducting search warrants, interviewing people, and arresting five suspects along the way, including... Parm Paul Sadu, a 54-year-old man from Brampton and an Air Canada employee. The other Air Canada employee allegedly involved is wanted on a Canada-wide arrest warrant with two others. Police say Simran Preet Panasar was the manager of the Air Canada cargo hangar where the gold was stolen from. He has been known to us um, since early on in the investigation. Uh, he actually um, led a tour for Peel Regional Police before we knew his involvement. You're probably expecting to see a pile of gold bricks. I know we were when we got to the press conference, but really the only evidence that remains of this heist at this police warehouse is the truck that was used, and it's completely empty. You see, this isn't about the gold. That was melted down a long time ago. A Toronto jeweler is among the arrested. Police say some of the gold was made into crude bracelets. More than $89,000 worth of those have been recovered by investigators. The rest of the loot was sold and the money used to purchase and traffic guns. Remember the driver? While allegedly on the run, he was pulled over in Pennsylvania for a traffic violation last September. He was arrested after police discovered 65 guns in his car. They say were destined to be trafficked in Canada. Those 65 firearms, definitely not in the hands of somebody, saved lives, without a doubt. So it's not just a theft of cargo. Uh, this is a dotted line to people's well-being anywhere in, these in this country, wherever those firearms ended up. While the Swiss bank the gold belonged to considers the case closed, Project 24 Carat continues. Canada-wide arrest warrants are out for three more suspects, including the former Air Canada warehouse manager. Ali Chiasson, CBC News, Brampton. Okay, for more on this investigation, we are joined now by Bruce Pitt Payne. He is a retired BC RCMP sergeant and major crimes investigator. We reach him tonight in Maple Ridge, British Columbia. So thanks for coming on. This is an absolutely wild case. What are you making of it? Well, I, I mean, the first thing is kudos, applause to Peel Regional Police and the other agencies that worked with them. This is a great job that they've done. It may seem like a long time, but for a major case like this, a year isn't that much. Uh, well done to them. Hmm. Peel Regional Police announced earlier that six people were arrested in connection to this, but it's been a year since the heist took place. Why has it taken this long uh, to be at the point of uh, making these arrests? Well, if you look at the public interest with an investigation, it, it doesn't serve anybody to have an investigation that is done half well. Mm -hmm. It has to be done very well or, or the charges don't go ahead and then they don't get through in court. Uh, so it's best to have a lot of patience and do the job properly, despite some of the expectations from outside of the police world. Uh, so that restraint is remarkable in itself that they didn't pull the pin, so to speak, early. We have to remember as well, Travis, that, that arresting somebody is based on reasonable grounds, reasonable probable grounds. That's a lower standard than the charge approval standard. They use the term either substantial likelihood of conviction or reasonable likelihood of conviction. That's higher. So it means they've got to do more than get the basics. So, so walk me through what this investigation has looked like. 
Well, it, it, at the beginning, we didn't learn a lot. We had a lot of assumptions, and I think everybody's sort of probably patting themselves on the back for the obvious, which is it's an inside job, or at least somebody said something which then leaked out and allowed somebody to plan. Uh, this looks a lot more nefarious. It's two people, from what I understand at least, that were right in Air Canada in their employ. And um, when we're looking at this now, the police right at the beginning uh, obtained video footage from along any of the possible routes, were able to follow that truck with the goal to a certain point. Um, they were able to uh, link a printer to that fake waybill uh, for the seafood, <laughs> apparently, um, very expensive seafood. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they were able to do all of this, and as well as do, th what, 37 search warrants. Um, this is going to be, at the end of the day, a remarkable and a very complex investigation that they did. You know, this heist was related to an alleged weapons trafficking ring in the United States. What can you tell us about these types of crime rings and how they might be involved? Well, I think it tells us that although this is the isolated incident, which was very sensationalistic and is very exciting about a gold heist, is the smaller potato, so to speak. What we should take from this is that it's a really good example of transnational organized crime, where uh, that can be human smuggling, it can be drug smuggling, it can be firearm trafficking, it can be money laundering. These are the dangers to Canada right now. And I hope that the people with power and money are looking at this because it probably means that for instance, why isn't the RCMP given the funding to look after this, whereas it should be its jurisdiction to, to follow these types of organized criminal activity before they happen? And, and Bruce, arrest warrants are still out for two unaccounted suspects. Where do you think this investigation is going to go from here? Well, it's going to be a lot of disclosure uh, in a case like this, that it's taken a year to get the information. That evidence has to be fairly and frankly disclosed to defense. Look at the number of defense lawyers that will be involved. So that's going to be a huge job. It doesn't stop now. They've got to find the ones that are on the run in Canada. It might be a fluke. It could be just an arbitrary pullover. Uh, by a random stop by a police officer and they find the person or somebody turns them in, they, which it would be great. One that might be lengthy is in the U.S., um, the fella down there, there's probably going to have to be extradition proceedings launched, which is a diplomatic effort, followed by possibly somebody, this fellow, fighting the extradition in the U.S. if he doesn't waive it. And then we have the specter of, does he have to serve his time in the U.S. for the gun smuggling or possession or whatever else he's going to deal with before he can even come up here? Uh, it's going to be a long, long time uh, before this thing is finished. Bruce, appreciate your analysis tonight and your insight on this. That is Bruce Pitpain, a retired B.C. RCMP sergeant and major crimes investigator.